Welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris, and today we're going to be talking about finding the magnitude of imaginary numbers. What we're doing here is basically thinking about how big are these imaginary numbers. And imaginary numbers, I remember, are just any number that contains i, and i is just the square root of negative 1. And complex numbers are the combination of a real and imaginary number. And if you want to know sort of how big these are, you can take the magnitude, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So if I have any function or complex number, say 2i, I can calculate its magnitude, that's what this guy is with those two bars there, by taking the square root of that number times its complex conjugate. What's its complex conjugate? We'll talk about that in just a second. But basically what you're doing is you're multiplying these, these two guys by each other and taking the square root. So it may seem kind of weird that we're doing all this stuff with imaginary numbers, but the math, again, is pretty straightforward, and it's important to get down for applications in chemistry. All right, so let's start out, and let's just go ahead and do one, and I think you'll get a better sense of what this looks like. So we have this guy. It says f is equal to 2i. What are the steps to finding the magnitude? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to take the complex conjugate of f. What is that? The complex conjugate sounds complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. We just look, and everywhere we see an i, we put a negative i. So everywhere you see an i, write negative i. So here we see f is equal to 2i. So the complex conjugate is just 2 times negative i. All I did is I saw, oh, there's an i there, and I'm going to put a negative i there. That's the complex conjugate. So we can get rid of those parentheses, and it's just negative 2i. So that's step one, and it's pretty straightforward. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to multiply those two guys by each other and take the square root. So the magnitude of f is equal to square root of f times this little star f, the complex conjugate. And so we know what both of those things are. We just calculated them. 2i, that was our original guy right there, times negative 2i. All right, and when we multiply those together, we're going to get the square root of negative 4i squared. So our i gets squared because there's two of them. We carry our negative sign over, and 2 times 2 is 4. Now, how are we going to go any farther than that? Well, here we have to remember something really important, and that is that i is the square root of negative 1, right? So i is equal to the square root of negative 1. What happens when I square both sides of that equation? Well, I square this, and I square this. And you can see here that what I've done is I've taken a square root of something and squared it. That just gets rid of my radical. That just gets rid of my square root. That means that i squared is just equal to negative 1. So down here, where I have the square root of negative 4 times i squared, I really have the square root of negative 4 times negative 1. And that means that I have the square root of 4, and we know that the square root of 4 is 2. So that is the magnitude of 2i. All I've done is I've taken the complex conjugate, that is switching out every time I have an i with a negative i, multiplied the complex conjugate by the original guy, and taken the square root. Let's do another example. Here I have f is equal to the square root of 2 plus 5i. Again, the first step is the same. I'm just going to take the complex conjugate, and that means that this little star f guy is square root of 2. There's no i in that part, so I just leave it the same. Plus 5, and now I see an i there, so I'm just going to put negative i. That's taking the complex conjugate. So if we want to get rid of that parentheses, we can just take our negative sign forward and we get square root of 2 minus 5i. All right, now let's go ahead and take the magnitude. So the magnitude of f is equal to the square root of our first guy, square root of 2 plus 5i. That was the original complex number that we wanted to know the magnitude of times our complex conjugate, which is just this guy right here. So times square root of 2 minus 5i. Now we've got to remember how to multiply two polynomials. And here, remember that we can always do what's called foiling. We multiply the first, then the outer numbers, then the inner numbers, and then the last numbers. And so what does that look like? Well, the first numbers are square root of 2 and square root of 2. So that's the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to multiply square root of 2 by square root of 2. And when I do that, I'm going to get 2. 
Then we're going to do the outer numbers. The outer numbers are square root of 2 and minus 5i. When I do that, I get minus square root of 2, 5i. Minus because there's a negative sign in front of that 5i. Then inner, that's these two. So plus 5i times square root of 2. And finally, last. So FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. The last is 5i times negative 5i. And what that's going to give me is negative 25 is negative 25i squared. All right, so that looks like a big ugly mess. Let's go ahead and simplify it. Well, the nice thing is, is negative 2 square root of 2 times 5i and 5i times square root of 2 are exactly the same thing. And so they cancel out then that means what we're going to get is square root of 2 and then we have to once again remember that our i squared is just negative 1 so that means minus 25 times negative 1 which is going to resolve to 2 plus 25 and that means that our magnitude f is equal to the square root of 27 so that is the magnitude of our original complex number. All right, one last example. <clears throat> now we have 6i minus 1 over i. So there's an i in two places. But nothing really changes here. We again just find the complex conjugate. And so the complex conjugate, we just find any spot there's an i, and we make it negative. So 6 times negative i minus 1 over our negative i. That's our complex conjugate. And remember now, we want to do the magnitude. That just means that we need to multiply our original complex number times its complex conjugate. So we're going to get our original number, which is 6i over i times negative 6i minus 1 over negative i. So the biggest trick here, once you get down taking the complex conjugate, is just remembering all of your different multiplication rules when you get sort of ugly functions like this. And so, here, again, we have to FOIL for our top guy. We multiply 6i by 6i, that's our first. And 6i times negative 6i is going to give me negative 36i squared. And then we do our outer ones, that is the very first and the very last one. So we do 6i times negative 1, which is going to give us minus 6i. And then we do the inner ones, minus 1 times negative 6i, and that's going to give us plus 6i. And finally last, which is 1 times our 1, which uh, negative 1 times negative 1 gives us positive 1. All right, what do we do on the bottom? Well, when we multiply fractions, we just multiply the top by the tops and the bottoms by the bottoms, and i times negative i is going to give us negative i squared. All right, now we have to start simplifying that mess. All right, so negative i squared or I'm sorry, i squared just gives us negative 1. So the very first thing we're going to write is our negative 36 times negative 1. So we get positive 36. That's because this guy is negative 1, and it cancels out with this negative sign there. So we get 36, and then these two guys cancel. Minus 6i plus 6i. And then at the end we have plus 1, and all over negative i squared. What's negative i squared? Well, that's negative times this guy, which is, remember, negative 1. So negative times negative 1 just gives us 1. All right, so it was big and messy, and now it's much more straightforward. Our 1, we can just ignore it, and we get square root of 37. So our magnitude of that guy, which looked like it was getting messy for a second, turned out to be not so bad. All right, so this is how you can take the magnitude of complex numbers. All you got to do is take that complex conjugate, which is switching out any i you see for a negative i, and then multiply your original guy times your complex conjugate and take the square root.
Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Please subscribe to receive updates about future Real Chemistry videos.